I think that the the metabolizable protein supply during late gestation is is very important. Um, this also can lead into supplementation of, of protected amino acids. We've done a number of studies with rumen protected methionine and a couple with rumen protected lysine and shown positive benefits to intake and production after calving with the prepartum supplementation of, of rumen protected methionine in particular. Hello everyone, this is Luis Ferrero again with the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt. And today we will continue discussing about how important nutritional interventions are to help with the metabolism uh, of transition dairy cows. Uh, and we'll continue our discussion with Dr. Jean Drakely, professor of animal science at the University of Illinois. Thanks again, Dr. Drakely, for joining us. Uh, and, you know, let, let's just dive in. You know, it's, uh, we discussed a lot about the energy metabolism on our previous episode. And today we want to shift gears a little bit and discuss about amino acids. So how is the metabolism of amino acids for the transition cow? So the, the amino acid supply is critically important both before and after calving. The fetal calf is using a large amount of amino acids for energy uh, bef during the, the late gestation period. So that's uh, an important supply factor. And then, of course, when the cow calves and starts producing milk, the intense demand for amino acids for milk protein is, is uh, you know, increased very suddenly. Uh, in addition, some of the amino acids, the, the glucogenic amino acids, may be shifted to glucose production in the time when uh, intake is, is low and just ramping up before propionate can supply all of the, the glucose production needs. So there's, there's a, a drain of amino acids there going to glucose production as well as the, the needs for, um, for milk protein production. And a milk protein really seems to be a driver of metabolism in early lactation. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen-protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to milkpay.com. That's very interesting. And very often we talk about fat mobilization by the cows. Do these changes in amino acid metabolism uh, also cause some sort of body protein mobilization? And if yes, how, how does that affect the cow? Yes, it does. Um, studies have shown that that body protein mobilization is, is increased at calving and actually reaches a maximum at around one week after calving before beginning to recover. Uh, again, this is to supply that deficit of amino acids that the, the rumen is unable to supply until intake is, is increasing. Um, some studies have shown um, that, that mobilization of the body protein uh, if it occurs before calving, can actually increase susceptibility to, to ketosis after calving because, again, there's less amino acids that can be mobilized then to support the, the glucose demands of the cow. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. And, and from that perspective, is there anything we could do as a nutritional intervention to help mitigate this issue? Uh, good question. I think the, that we're finding that the um, the pre-calving supply of amino acids is, is very important. Um, as various bodies, nutritional committees have looked at the protein requirements before calving, they, um, the, the factorial method of, of assigning requirements usually only comes to eight or 900 grams per day of metabolizable protein. And we know from field experience that we need more than that. And the, the reason for that discrepancy has been unclear. Um, I think the, the big reason is that we're, we're needing 
um, additional amino acids to restore the, the body protein pools that have been depleted. Um, Jackie Borman from Purdue has got some very interesting data coming um, with ultrasounding cows, uh, the muscle of cows, to look at protein status over the course of lactation. And uh, the most recent time that I, I heard Jackie speak, she was saying that the, the muscle protein uh, stores don't seem to be repleted even very late into lactation. And so it's possible that the amino acid supply, the, the uh, metabolizable protein supply in late gestation is, is needed to finish repleting those, those muscle pools of protein and amino acids. So at any rate, I think that the, the metabolizable protein supply during late gestation is, is very important. Um, this also can lead into supplementation of, of protected amino acids. We've done a number of studies with rumen protected methionine and a couple with rumen protected lysine and shown positive benefits to intake and production after calving with the prepartum supplementation of, of rumen protected methionine in particular. And do you think that in addition to the prepartum supplementation, there is uh, value in also having a postpartum supplementation of both uh, rumen protected amino acids or uh, metabolizable protein? Absolutely. Um, we've shown benefits to the, the continued supplementation of rumen protected methionine into early postpartum. Methionine is an interesting amino acid because in addition to it being limiting often for milk uh, protein production, it's utilized in so many other metabolic pathways, um, such as production of cysteine, another amino acid needed for milk protein. Uh, it's needed for export of, of fatty acids from the liver, uh, involved in methylation of DNA, um, which is an important regulatory process. It's just, just being understood and also needed for synthesis, uh, providing the methyl groups for synthesis of, of a, a whole host of compounds like phosphatidylcholine, the major phospholipid, uh, and carnitine and creatine and, and many other compounds. So methionine um, has a, a large value in addition to thinking about its role in, in um, milk protein production. Lysine, in, in contrast, seems to really be related to milk protein production, and, and the lysine supply, we, we feel, has a, a major determining role in, in the early lactation milk yield, getting the cows up to peak milk yield. And so increasing the supply of lysine in metabolizable protein or through rumen protected lysine can help drive cows to higher early peak production. So it would be safe to say that a combination of those two amino acids would be ideal throughout the transition period, or, or, or do farmers have to choose one of them? No, I think balancing for both is, is important because we need to keep a, an a, a, a appropriate relationship between the, the two in order to maximize the efficiency of the, the cow. Um, here in the, the U.S., we have the luxury of being able to use blood meal, which is a good source of lysine and metabolizable protein. Uh, many other areas in the world are not able to use blood meal, and so the, the role of the protected lysine becomes even more important. Well, all great tips today, you know, including a, a very interesting fact about uh, muscle uh, deposition as well as not accumulation until late lactation. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, I hope people at home can use some of those tips to better formulate diets focus on the protein or amino acid aspects of the transition cows, which you obviously uh, overlook compared to energy metabolism. So I, I, I hope people can properly implement some of those. So thanks again. Uh, thank you at home for listening to the podcast. We hope to see you soon. Hey, everyone. We are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, Feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.